Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this scarf here. It's actually very easy, very beginner friendly. Um, and it has the two palms on the end, which I sewed on. I got these palms on Amazon. So if you type it, if you go to Amazon and you type in faux fur pom poms, um, you'll see a whole all sort assortment of all different kinds. And um, now uh, it measures without the palms, approximately 52 inches. Of course, you can make it to your desired length. I just used up one skein of yarn and then I quit. So it's not an extremely long scarf, but feel free to make it 70 inches, however long you want it, you can make it. Um, but, and then with the palms, it measures approximately 56 inches. But if that's, if that's the size you want, that's cool. You can follow along with me on the size too. Um, and it's about, let me see here. Um, eight inches wide. I do believe. Let me take a quick measure. Ooh, eight inches on the button. Eight inches exactly. And you can always make that smaller too. I'll tell you the multiple so you can make it as wide as you want. And it's like I said, it's really easy. It's all double and single. This is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I am using a Red Heart Gemstone yarn. It is a 100% uh, acrylic, bulky number five yarn. And there are 312 yards. Now, you don't have to use this yarn. You don't even have to use a bulky five. Any weight of yarn will work. As you can just, I'll give you the multiple and you can make the scarf as thick as you want depending on the multiple, you know, that I tell you. Just make it as wide as you want, and then you can make it as long as you want. So really any type of yarn. This is very uh, uh, scarf that you can make very easily to suit whatever yarn you have in any size that you want. But I did use this Red Heart Gemstones. I used one complete uh, skein, which was 312 yards of a bulky five. And the color is called citr Citrine. I think that's right. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, this stitch is called the track stitch. Very easy to make, and it's a two row repeat. A very easy repeat. So this would be a great beginner project. As long as you know the basic stitches, you would know how to have chain, double, and single and slip knot. So we're going to start by making a slip knot on our hook. Now it's done in a multiple of 10 plus 6 and that's going to give you the width of your scarf. For the size that I made approximately 8 inches I did a chain of 26. Okay so once you get your chain of 26 made we want to go ahead and do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. Now remember, we don't count the one that's on our hook. So in the second stitch over, we're going to put a single crochet. And now we want to put a single crochet into the next four stitches. So it'll be one, two, three, and four. So counting the very first single crochet that we did in the second stitch from the hook, plus the four that we just did, we'll have a total of five single crochets there. Now what we want to do is work five double crochets, one double crochet into the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to work five single crochets in a row. So one single crochet into the next five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And you know, we're just kind of kind of repeat what we've been doing. So now we're going to do one double crochet into the next five. One, two, three, 
four, and five. And we just repeat that, you know, uh, five singles, five doubles, five singles, five doubles, until you get to the end. So I'm coming to the end and I have five stitches left. I just did five doubles, so I'm gonna end by putting five singles in a row. So one, two, three, four, and there's five. Now you will have a total of 25 stitches. So that's the magic number. That's the amount of stitches you're gonna have at the end of every row now, if you're following the same size as me. So a row two and three are the repeat rows. Very easy and very similar to what we just did. So we're gonna start row two by chaining one and turning our work. Now, since on our, on our previous row, we started with five single crochets, now we're gonna start with five double crochets. And we're gonna put the first one in the very, very first stitch here. So we wanna do five double crochets in a row. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna put five single crochets in a row. And if you look, we'll be putting five single crochets on top of the five double crochets from the previous row. So five single crochets in a row. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And that's what we're gonna repeat all the way to the end of row two. Now I'll do five double crochets in a row. And then five single crochets in a row. And then I have five stitches left. I'm gonna go ahead and end by putting the five double crochets in a row into the last five stitches. Just like that and that'll in a row two and that's what it kind of looks like and you'll still have your 25 stitches so we're going to start row three by chaining one and turning our work row three is very similar to row one so what we're going to do is start off since we started last time with five doubles in a row now we're going to start with five singles in a row first one goes into the very very first stitch here so five singles in a row there's one two, three, four, and five. Now, our next, uh, what we're gonna do next is five double crochets in a row. And if you look, it will be on top of the five single crochets from the previous row. So see how easy this is? And it makes a nice little texture once you get more uh, rows on it. You can see the little tracks that it forms. You, you'll understand why it's called a track stitch. And then we do five singles in a row. And we just repeat this until we get to the end of the row. The five singles and the five doubles, five singles and the five doubles. There it is, 25 stitches again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna start repeating rows two and three. So for row four, I would chain one and turn my work, and I would repeat what we did 
on row two. Since we started with single crochets in the previous row, we would start with the five doubles. So whatever row you started with, if you started with singles on the previous row, you would start with doubles on the next. If you started with doubles, then you would start with singles. So it's very easy, just like that. Now you want to keep doing that until uh, repeating rows two and three until you get your scarf the length that you want it to be, however long um, you you desire it to be. I think I read on the internet. I'm not 100% certain, but it did say that the length of your scarf on average should measure the height of the person that you're trying to make it for. Um, I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of what I I go by sometimes but sometimes I just make them shorter so where they it just it just depends on what kind of style you're trying to wear but you make it however long that you want to make it make it to your desired length repeating rows two and three okay now I have done my scarf um, and I finished out one entire skein of this yarn that I was using so I finished out it's a bulky five remember and there's 312 yards so I just used all of that and it reached approximately 52 inches it's not a huge scarf you can make it bigger if you want if you have you know um want to keep going you make it as long as you want that's where i stopped right around 52 inches but please be um make it as long as you choose it's, it's your scarf so what you want to do after you get it your scarf as long as you want it to be the only reason i stopped is because i just finished out that skein now, what you want to do is leave a long tail. So I'm just going to pull my yarn up. Now, this is if you want to sew on a pom-pom at the end, like this. You do not have to do that. Of course, you never have to do exactly what I do. You know, it's your scarf. You make it however you want. But if you want to do that, I'm going to show you how, you how you do it. It's not hard. So I just took my... I just tied off there. Now I'm going to take my end of my tail here, and I'm going to load it up on a yarn needle. And I am going to take this, and I'm just going to go through every, uh, every two stitches or so at the top here. And I'm just going to gather it all up at the end. So just like that. Now I'm going to pull it and it's going to gather it all up like that. And now I'm going to sew on my palm. Now the palms I have have a loop somewhere, an elastic loop. You can buy ones that have buttons on them, but whatever you prefer. I like the elastic loop ones. If I can find it anyway, sometimes they're hard to find. Alright, let me try a different palm. Okay, this palm has strings on it. So, <laughs> I'm going to pull this tight and then I'm going to go and kind of like just sew it up a bit here at the end. And then I'm going to sew on the, you know, I don't usually get palms with strings. So, I'm going to wing it at this on camera here with you, <laughs> with you guys watching me. Let's see. Now, there's many ways you can attach a palm. You can hot glue it. You can sew it. You can use the elastic loop for some reason. I can't find the one on this one. And sew it. You can, um, did I say, add a button and button it. It all just depends on if you plan on putting it in the washer or not. I think what I'm going to do with this, once I sew this up real tight, I'm just going to sew that palm on individually. You can make your own palms too, and then just sew them on too. So you just want to make sure this is all tied up in here, and that is not going to come undone on you. And then I'm going to take the strings from this palm, I guess. Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to load them up, and I'm just going to sew them on, kind of like I just sewed that on. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to do it. 
So I'm going to continue sewing my palm on. I'm just going to sew it on just back and forth, back and forth, sew it on real tight with both strings. Once I get done sewing the side on, I'll grab the string and sew it on until it's nice and tight. Remember, you can always, if you have the elastic, but this one was supposed to have elastic. I don't know. It got cut or something. Probably my daughter. But anyways, you can always sew a button on and just hook the elastic around the button. Like I said, you can hot glue it, you know, all kinds of things. Sew it. So I'm just going to sew this palm on here to the end. I already have one sewed on to the other end. And then I'll meet back up with you as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, now once you get your pom-pom sewed on, if you decided to do that, that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Please don't forget to uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. And if you look over there on the right-hand side, I will put a um, playlist of all my other scars. Maybe you could look through there and find something else that you like and that you want to make. So thanks everybody for watching. Have a good day.